Hi, my name is Atif Darwish, professor of OPGU and Ashut University, Egypt. Today, I'd like to discuss with you an important issue, which is uh, how to access the fallopian tubes when you are doing hysteroscopy. We know that the best access to the fallopian tube is done via laparoscopy, as the fallopian tube is uh, entirely seen by laparoscopic examinations. But when you are doing hysteroscopy, you start by examination of the cervical canal and comment on the uh, normal findings like arpor vitae, which are seen here in this video, which is the storage place for the sperms for uh, washing or flushing with the endometrial cavity by sperms to achieve fertilization. And any abnormality inside the cervical canal should be commented on. And thereafter, you have to go inside the endometrial cavity and comment on the internal os, the fundus, anterior and posterior uterine walls, lateral uterine walls, and corneal ends. At the corneal ends, you can make the ostia as landmarks for the corneal ends. But what's behind the uh, ostia? is not described by, by hysteroscopic uh, examination in many uh, cases. So we have to uh, evaluate what's behind the ostium and this can be achieved by describing what's called Darwish hysteroscopic triad, which is a conical part of the fallopian tube with its base is the tubal ostia and the apex is pinhole dark spot representing the narrowest part of the fallopian tube and the lateral walls of this cone are formed by the intramural part of the fallopian tube. In this video you can see the uh, ostia which is a fine circle. Inside it you can see the cone with converging walls formed by the intramural part of the fallopian tube and the summit is a dark spot which represents the nervous part of the fallopian tube. When you concentrate on this triad, which is ostium, the intramural part, and the dark spot, this is the starting point how to assess the fallopian tube via hysteroscopy. And there are different shapes of the uh, hysteroscopic Darwish triad, and you can evaluate it with further examination and gain a lot of experience. As a proof that this is a part of the fallopian tube, not the endometrial cavity, you can see in this video some endosalpingeal mucosal folds uh, stained by the methylene blue, and the major folds are seen here in this video to ensure that this is a part of the fallopian tube not the endometrial cavity. So you are examining the fallopian tube, not the endometrial cavity, and you have an access to the fallopian tube via hysteroscopy. In many cases, if you concentrate on the Darush triad, you can see a lot of lesions like micropolyps, and these polypi, if you concentrate, you will see the pedicles coming from the intramural part of the or the dark spot not from the endometrial cavity. So it is a tubal polyp, not endometrial cavity polyp. And this is completely different from the endometrial cavity as it needs special instrumentation, fine and delicate instruments to grasp or to remove these lesions. Also, sometimes you can see the triad as normal like this case, but if you focus on it and wait some time, you can see some polyps coming from the inside intramural part of the fallopian tube representing a cause of infertility by making occlusion of the ostium against ascent of the sperms. So if you have to uh, be more meticulous during hysteroscopic examination, please don't forget to concentrate on the Darush triad to reach any uh, lesion that is hidden by the routine examination or the routine hysteroscopy itself. All these issues and more 
are demonstrated in a recent publication in the Journal of Gynecologic Surgery by uh, our team. And the clinical utility of this triad can be summarized as it widens the scope of hysteroscopists to observe and comment on the proximal part of the fallopian tube during routine hysteroscopy. It helps diagnosis and possible management of tiny lesions like micropolypi and fine adhesions that may be a cause of infertility and of course they need special instrumentation and lastly it can lead to opening the door for more research on in vivo study of tubal anatomy uh, and physiology but if you try to reach this triad sometimes you will fail and the failure is, uh, can be attributed to some factors like wrong timing. When you examine the patient premenstrually, you can find a lot of thick endometrium and you cannot see the uh, triad well. So you should examine your patients immediately postmenstrually because the transition between the endometrium and endocelvix is easily seen. Uh, as the endometrium is discomating while the endosalvinx is not. Also another difficulty is the conversion lateral uterine walls, which is called T-shaped uterus, and now it is included in some classifications of uterine anomalies. And in such cases, if you cannot reach the triad due to the conversion lateral walls, you can do lateral incisions by fine uh, uh, probes like monopolar or bipolar five French probes to widen the endometrial cavity and to have an access to this triad. Another factor is thick endometrium and a uh, lot of endometrial shreds, particularly in cases of endometrial hyperplasia like this case, you cannot reach the ostium well and cannot reach the triad well because of a lot of micropolyps and uh, pseudopolypi of the endometrial hyperplasia. Sometimes endometrium is very vascular and the field is bloody. This is another difficulty that prevents proper visualization of dark triad. Another important issue is some technical causes that may prevent you from reaching this triad. The first is Patient's positioning. Usually we use the uh, dorsal lysotomy position for hysteroscopic examination, but for access to the dorsal triad, you should make a little bit more abduction of the size because you are uh, concentrating on the corneal ends right and left, and you have to go on the right side to reach the left cornea and left side to reach the right cornea. So you have to make more abduction, a little bit more abduction than usual if you are focusing on the uh, uh, corneal ends and reaching the Darush triad. This is very important to, go, to have a good access. Choice of hysteroscopy is an important contributing factor. Some uh, people use the flexible hysteroscope with the advantage of uh, being flexible so it can reach the corneal ends and darus triad, triad easily. However, the flexible hysteroscope is not readily available in many operative rooms. It is more expensive and it's less durable than the rigid hysteroscope. So if you are working with rigid hysteroscope, you should have some precautions to reach the corneal ends well and the comment on the darus triad uh, properly. Firstly, you should not use a zero angle hysteroscope because this zero angle will not give you a good access to the corneal ends. Zero angle, you can see the fundus, what's seen in front of you, but you should use at least 30 degrees angle. Also, 12 degree angle is not recommended. So it's better to use 30 degree angle telescope to have an access to the corneal ends and be minded that if the uterus is AVF, you should know that the focus should be on the six o'clock position. If it is RVF, the focus of the uh, 
uh, tip of the telescope should be on the uh, 12 o'clock position. Another important technical issue is how to handle the telescope. The telescope is connected to light cable by light lead uh, and light lead should be down if the uh, tip of the 30 degree telescope is up so the uh, light cable should be down and the tip should be up and this uh, can you can go if the uterus is if, if at six o'clock as i told you but if you make the light cable up so the tip is down and if you go in this position uh, this may lead to false passage or perforation so to have good orientation of the endometrial cavity and corneal ends you should master the instrument what you are using the hysteroscope the how to know the tip where is the direction and where is the side of the light cable as the same for the camera should be consistent with the tip of the telescope prior to insertion of this instrument inside the uterus some difficulty is uh, uh, resulted uh, from cervical canal problems like kinking or uh, obstruction or tight uh, or stenosis. So these difficulties can be overcome by negotiation uh, thanks to using office hysteroscopy, which is of a small caliber. You can negotiate the cervical canal and reach to the uh, site of the uh, internal os uh, easily. And this uh, has been recently published by our now you have a good access to the Darus triad. What is the value of accessing this side? You can reach this side to remove some lesions that may contribute to infertility like micropolyps. As I told you, they are commonly seen by hysteroscopic examination and you can grasp the micropolyp by a microforceps or a delicate forceps and remove them from if they are, are bedunculated if they are not you can use fine scissors to excise them from the corneal end and the darus triad the same you are inside now inside the darus triad and the ostium is outside and now we are inside the intramural part and you can see some fine adhesions that may occlude the uh, dark spot of the darus triad and these fine adhesions can be excised uh, by fine scissors. Via Darwish thread, you can have access to the proximal part completely by doing tubal cannulation in cases of isolated proximal tubal occlusion. There are different tools for tubal cannulation, including Novus corneal cannulation set and other sets. And if you reach the corneal end, you can use the you can use the probe to go inside the darus triad, and then insert the outer catheter inside the triad. And after that, you should you can insert a Teflon uh, uh, catheter with its stylet to bypass any obstruction and then remove out of the stylet and inject the dye inside the Teflon caster to be seen by laparoscopy to be sure that you bypass the minimal obstruction and I have to concentrate on the point that the tubal cannulation is only done if there is an uh, isolated proximal tubal occlusion maybe due to debris or fine adhesions but if you see by laparoscopy some extra tubal lesions like myoma, like adenomyosis, like salvingitis ismicanodosa, or peritubal dense adhesions or distal tubal occlusion, all these are contraindications of uh, tubal cannulation.
if you have some difficulty in supply of these sophisticated expensive cannulation sets you can use the ureteric caster uh, uh, to bypass the obstruction and again you can remove the stylet after bypassing the obstruction under sonographic uh, under laparoscopic guidance and then you inject the dye inside the urethral uh, ureteric caster Another application of accessing the Darush triad is to make hysteroscopic tubal occlusion in cases of hydrosalvix. And this can be achieved by mechanical approach when you use a shore, for example, or uh, overplug or the uh, uh, tubal screw. All these tools are used to uh, make occlusion of the tube for tubal sterilization for, uh, for contraception as well as for occlusion of hydrosalvinx to prevent uh, flux of the endosalpingeal fluid inside the endometrial cavity to increase the chance of pregnancy and increase fecundability rate and uh, these uh, uh, techniques are advantageous over using the intrauterine contraceptive device for contraception because uh, they leave the endometrial cavity free and so they can be used prior to uh, IVF ICSI. Again, you can access the corneal ends and the Darus triad by the resectoscope and using roller pole, you can make coagulation of the uh, uh, proxima of the Darus triad and of the dark spot of the Darush triad and you fire the uh, electrode or the Rora ball up to 80 watts to make char and to make complete occlusion of the tubal ostium and intramural part and the dark spot achieving tubal occlusion in cases of hydrosalmix in up to 80% of cases as uh, found in one of our studies. Some scarce studies uh, describe hysteroscopic removal of corneal uh, ectopic pregnancy via hysteroscopy. All these procedures and more can be achieved when you concentrate on this part of the fallopian tube via hysteroscopy. And what's new in this field is tubal function study like bubble uh, flow tests, which is, tests the patency by observation of the passage of air bubbles inside the tubal ostium uh, or non-passage in cases of occlusion as seen on the video on the right side due to the presence of an organic cause which is a fine polyp inside the intramural part of Darush triad. So the air bubble and bubbles uh, cannot cross to the uh, proximal part of the fallopian tube and this is a case of negative bubble flow test. Another important issue is to study the tubal prestalsis. We know that the tubal prestalsis of the proximal part is from the endometrial cavity to the ampulla and the distal part from the fimbria 
to the ampulla as well. So when we uh, succeed to study the peristalsis by hysteroscopy, this is another advantage. The uh, details of studying tubal peristalsis as well as patency by hysteroscopy will be addressed in another lecture. Thank you very much.